Okay, there we are. Okay, so what do we got here? We got a razor blade. Tell them all to mute. Any razor's not muted. Oh, if you can, make sure that you mute yourself and then unmute when you want to ask a question. That way we don't get all this background noise from people's dogs and chickens and whatever else you got going on in your house, okay? So what do we got? We got a razor blade, okay? Just a, a why got an X-Acto knife or some other knife, you know, you can do whatever you want. They lose their, their, uh, their edge faster, okay? And I, I do have a sharpener, I never use it. There's that, I know some of you get those kits and it brings this. The problem with these sharpeners is that they break your point because charcoal is much softer than graphite or a lot of other things. And so for that reason, these things are just, they're just garbage. I never use them. So I use a razor blade. And again, you go to my uh, YouTube channel, Rob's Art Class. I got a little video there on how to sharpen your pencil, okay? And another video on supplies. So if you want to go more in depth with the supplies, there's like a little five minute video on that. Okay, so if you miss something, don't worry. Just get online with that and you're good. Rob's Art Class. Look for my face without the beard and a baseball cap and I'm doing something. I got my hand to my face or something. Okay, so razor blades is the best thing you can do. And then you just hold your pencil real quick. I'm gonna show you. And then you just, I'm trying to do it with the camera there. And then you just go like that, okay? And again, just look up that video and you'll see what I'm talking about. The next thing is a chamois. You can use whatever you like. As you can see, mine is worn out. There's a hole. That is a lot of blending. That is all. This is very old chamois. I love it. Okay. Yeah, there's different materials you can use for this. Believe it or not, just an ordinary paper towel. That'll work too. You don't have to spend money. I don't like the ones that they sell at Michael's with, it's like a, it, it's like pig skin leather or something. It's a little bit too rough for my taste, but maybe you like it. It's up to you. Okay. There's no rule on that. Do whatever you want. I use general, uh, a general brand uh, charcoal pencils. Okay. So I use the, there's different gradations from extra hard, HB hard, medium, soft, and extra soft. The extra hard is the lightest one. HB hard is like a little bit darker, but not overly dark. Medium is just a little too dark, and then the soft and the extra soft are extremely dark black lines. The reason I don't use those is simply because they're just too dark. And as a student, a lot of times, uh, one of the number one things I run into is people already have a problem with pressure. They, they put too much pressure, too much material, whatever, and it's just a, a huge mess. So for that reason, I use the HB hard, okay? And you're gonna get, I do 90% of the work, and some of you that are return students, you know I do like 90% of my drawing with the HB hard. And then only if I need to go to really dark areas like hair or the eye or something like that, I'll move, I'll move up just one level to like a medium. And then maybe sometimes I'll use a soft, but usually it's just the HB hard. The next one is the white charcoal. Again, if you got a kit, it brought one of these white ones. Now I'm going to show you a sample I brought in of uh, the Arrow guy that's on one of my videos also. And you'll see that I use the white. And that's self-explanatory. There's just one white. The other hey, tool I got here is... Robert, can I interrupt you? Yeah. It's yeah, go ahead. So a friend, a friend gave me some pencils, and it's, it says 2B, 4B, 6B. HP. Okay. I have four of them. Huh. And they're pastels? No, no, they're they're charcoal. Charcoal. Oh, those are graphite. Okay, graphite. Um, Is it graphite? Yeah, they're, that's graphite. That's a oh. different material. Graphite, I'll, I'll tell you about you guys real quick, a lot of people don't understand or they just don't know the difference. Graphite is like the number two pencil you all flunk your test with in school. Okay? That's your number two pencil you got sitting in your kitchen drawer. I got this message on my screen here. Give me a second. Welcome, Annie. Hi. How you doing? Sir? Go How ahead. you doing, babe? So graphite is, is your number two pencil. That's a different monster, okay, from charcoal. The reason I say that, a lot of people don't realize that graphite will repel the charcoal. They don't mix well, okay? There's ways of doing it, but I want to suggest mixing them. If you didn't get charcoal, that's fine. Everything I teach you can be done in graphite pencils, okay? Everything I teach you can be done in graphite, so it's kind of like a two-for-one class. You're getting instruction on both. 
Okay, but I prefer charcoal because you can get extremely dark with charcoal, real true black, whereas graphite will never give you that. It only goes into a gray, to a middle to dark gray at best. That's it. Okay. I like that flag. Treat people with kindness. I don't agree with that, but whatever. <laughs> you know. I have a, it says medium wash 4B and light wash HB charcoal. Light wash? I think those might be watercolor type pencils. They say uh, charcoal. Well, it's Derwent. Der sketch. Oh, Derwent. Okay, yeah. I would use the light. So I think they got a light, medium, and uh, dark on that. Right. I would use the light at first and try that. Okay, I've, I've had that brand before. Uh, I've, I've experimented with it. I don't personally like it. There's nothing wrong with it. You might fall in love with it. My personal opinion, I didn't like the brand. I like their brand for other things like pastel pencils, but I didn't like their charcoal. I found it too gray. It didn't go dark enough. Okay, so back to this. So this is my blending stuff. And, you know, blending stuff, you can buy them. They're like a couple bucks for a bag of like six of them or something. And you see the size I like. You don't want giant ones. This is fine. And then you got this. And your black side, okay? Black end of my stuff. Because then I'm just going to make a huge mess. And I don't want the white end into my black charcoal. Again, you're going to end up making a huge mess. It's going to come out lighter. Okay, so always segregate these. You can see them. Hopefully, you can see them. You're cutting in and out. You got and the darker side, okay? Put that away. And then why a kneaded eraser? Because a kneaded eraser is soft. You can shape it. You can go into little crevices with it. Okay, I shape mine. It looks like kind of a teardrop shape or whatever. That's your go-to eraser for everything, okay? 99% of what I do is this eraser. I don't use, I'll show you one here. You see the hard white erasers like this? I got one, basically just, uh, you see it's pretty much brand new. I don't really use it because it'll damage the surface of your paper. Those are, they're hard, right? So they'll just damage your paper. You're just, you're gonna get into trouble. Use yourself, get, you know, make yourself uh, happy and get this, a needed eraser. The next thing, and you don't have to get this, I like using it. It's this little, I call it clicky eraser. You know, you click it like a pen and then it comes out longer. I sharpen mine to a point. I use a General's brand. You can go online on Amazon. They're like, I don't know, somewhere between six to 10 bucks. Hey, Julie. Hi. I'm going over the supplies real fast. Make sure you guys mute yourself if you don't have to ask a question. That way we don't get background noise and stuff. So this is the click eraser. You can get these for somewhere between six to 10 bucks on Amazon, okay? Uh, or wherever you want to get. Don't get the one that has the fat quarter inch thick 99 cent thing at you know, the office depot or something. That is not the same thing. They, they wobble like this, you're gonna get a headache. You need one of these, okay? And this is optional, you don't have to have it, but I do, I like it. Then some brushes, this big fluffy one, let me see if I can do it with the camera, see how fluffy that is? That's just to get any of those little eraser thingies off my paper. You don't wanna go like this with your hand because your hand's gonna smudge all that charcoal, right? Kind of common sense. So I just use my brush and I just brush off the lower eraser uh, residue, whatever you call it. Then a little barbecue stick, you don't have to, you can use a, anything, a little barbecue skewer. And that's just so I can do proportions, right? So I can do this thing and I can see the proportions. And then I got these three brushes, a nice, you know, round number four, I believe it is, right? You can get whatever size you want. And it's just kind of soft, not too soft. And this is great for blending. These are a little stiffer. This is a, uh, like a flat brush, right? And then there's a number two round brush, okay? And you can get these at Michael's. And they're just for blending. And you'll see as the class progresses how I use this, okay? And then here it is, you know, what's this little tub of butter, okay? This is basically, let me get one. I brought a little sample. When you go to Home Depot, or Lowe's or whatever hardware store you go to. This is called screen sandpaper, okay? It looks like the screen for your screen door, but it has like an aggregate glue to it. And what this does, it lets me sharpen my pencil. And because it has a, uh, holes in it, it drops through and it doesn't clog. You can use regular sandpaper, but you're, you know, it's gonna clog. When you go buy this stuff, 
It's usually like in the uh, plaster department where they do drywall stuff. Um, you want to get the one that says fine, F-I-N-E, because the other ones are a little too coarse. So that's that. One of my students took a little tub of butter and her husband, let me move over here, her husband glued it to the inside part of the lid, as you can see here, okay? And then it just, this collects all the charcoal, as you can see. So it's just a way of staying clean. It's a very ingenious way of doing things. You don't have to do it that way, but, you know, why not? I don't know what kind of butter or glue he used, but whatever glue he used, it looks like some sort of a epoxy or something. But anyways, hopefully you guys all understand again on my YouTube channel. Um, you can see the supply list and all that explained. Rob's art class, check it out. And then you'll see it on there. I go over all this stuff in depth. And there's another one on how to sharpen your pencil, okay? Don't discard that. It sounds stupid that you need to sharpen your pencil, but I'm telling you, if you don't know how to sharpen a pencil the way I do, you're going to suffer. So look it up, and you're going to see what I'm talking about, okay? People have been in my class before, and there's a few of you here. You know what I'm talking about. If you don't know how to sharpen a pencil, it's a nightmare. Okay, so enough of that. So we're going to – let me uh, toggle this camera – Okay, here we go. So this is a picture I'm going to be working on. Because this is such a short class and it's only four weeks, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate the entire four weeks on just this guy. That way we can go over everything really slow and I don't leave everybody behind, okay? So we're going to just work on him for four weeks. So we got plenty of time to knock this guy out. Here's this one here. It, it's, I did this little uh, four-minute, one of those sped-up videos on my YouTube channel. And I did this Arab guy. I brought him in because he was already sitting on my easel at home. You can see him done here. And this is the same HB hard pencil. Okay, not extra hard, HB hard. This is what I did, okay? And then it has the, uh, the white chart. All the exact same tools I'm using today are going to be uh, what I did here. And it's what I'm going to do in class, okay? And you can get these go. And this guy, even though the video in the, on the YouTube channel is four minutes, I think it is. It took me an hour and nine minutes in real time, which is still really fast for a portrait, okay? So I'm not gonna go that fast for you, I promise. We'll go into this in depth. So in this class, we're gonna learn all about proportions. That's the number one thing that I wanna put, yeah, that's the word to describe this class, proportions, okay? How do you get proportions, okay? That's what we're, that's what we're gonna learn. And everything I'm teaching you here, oh, I see calipers. Those are the devil's minions. Do not use calipers. No calipers. We don't use tools. We use the six inches between our ears, okay? We use our brain. We use our mad skills as artists. We don't need tools other than a pencil, a paper, and maybe a stick if you need one. Okay, so here's my here's a little sketchbook. So I'm just going to show you real quick the idea of proportions so you guys can understand. It's a little hard to do on camera uh, compared to when I do it in class, but we can all see the sketchbook, I hope, and we can all see the bottle of water here, right? So good. Let me see if I can move this up a little bit. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to look at this bottle. I'm going to say, imagine this bottle, because of the way things are set up, I kind of got to do it the way I'm doing it. But imagine that this bottle was, you know, a couple feet away from me, okay? Like a model would be a person or something. And I wanted to draw this bottle. The number one thing I need to do is determine what the longest dimension is. In other words, by dimension, I mean from top to bottom or from left to right, okay? So is this bottle bigger from top to bottom or from left to right? Top to bottom, right? Top to bottom. So I orientate my paper because they're typically rectangular, right? I wouldn't want to draw the bottle this way unless I was going to draw a bunch of stuff next to it. It has to do with aesthetics and composition. Okay, so I'm going to try to teach you that as best I can in this little class. So we're going to orientate the paper lengthwise because the bottle is lengthwise. I'm not going to sit here and draw an entire bottle for the next hour. I'm just going to do a real fast thing just to explain myself. And then I'm going to determine how big do I want to draw 
this bottle of water. It does not matter, this is important, it doesn't matter if the bottle of water was, you know, this big or that big or whatever. It simply doesn't matter. Just like your photograph doesn't have to be the same size as your paper. I've had that question posed before. It doesn't matter. If you got an eight by 10 printout, that's fine, okay? It does not matter. So I look at this bottle and I wanna draw this bottle. I determine on my drawing where the highest and lowest points are gonna be. So let's just say I wanna draw the bottle, the top of it here and the bottom of it here, okay? I wanna draw it this way. And I base that on composition rules of trying to keep it a little higher on my paper than center, okay? We'll go more into that later on in other classes. So I say I'm gonna draw it, the top of the bottle here, and the bottom there. Now I need to break this bottle up from top to bottom, what's inside this bottle. And this could easily represent the top of the head and the bottom of the chin. Same concept, right? And then what would be in between, the eyes, the nose, and all that stuff. So let's go look at the bottle. We got this label right here, the bottom of the label. I try to cut things up when it's the big uh, size like this. I try to break it up into halves, okay? In half, if it's possible. If there's something that is close to halfway. So halfway from top to bottom on my bottle is probably right around the bottom of the label. Can we agree on that? Something like around there, maybe a little bit lower. So then I'm gonna go over to my drawing and I'm gonna find halfway and say, let's just say it was here. This is not gonna be the best drawing, it's just an example. And it, let's just say that's about the halfway. And so this represents the bottom of the label. Pretty common sense so far, right? Everybody understand so far? Just nod your heads, hopefully, yes. Pretty simple, nothing complicated. Now let's concentrate on the top half of this bottle. So what's in the, from the bottom of the label to the top of the cap? What's in there? Well, let's finish off this label. It's right here, right? The top of the label. The top of the label is what? Not quite halfway between the bottom of the label and the top of the bottle. It's a little lower than halfway in this space, right? From my pencil to my finger. It's a little lower than halfway, I'd say, the top of the label, right guys? So then I'm gonna come over to my drawing. I'm gonna say from the top of my bottle to the bottom of my label, I'm gonna go a little lower than halfway, just a little bit. That words that I just said right now, those words that I just used, a little bit. As artists, we have to be able to determine what a little bit is. This is not a science class. It's not a math class. I can't say one eighth of an inch or two inches or a quarter or anything like that. All I'm gonna tell you is a little bit. That's where practice comes in. You know that a little bit for you at the scale you're drawing at, okay, at your skill level, a little bit, maybe K said a little bit is that much. That's not a little bit, that's a lot. Maybe Susan thought a little bit was that much and I was like, oh, that's not enough. That's where practice comes in. Okay, you're not gonna learn this by just getting online once a week. You need to go home and practice this stuff. Or in their case, stay at home and practice all this nonsense. So let's go where we left off. So now we got the top of the label, right? Just a little lower in this space. It's a little lower than halfway of this little tiny space. Now, from the top of the label to the top of the lid on my bottle here, what do we have that's important from the top of the label to the top of the lid? We got the bottom of the lid here because there's really nothing else worth mentioning, right? There's no other important things to mention. So how much do I got to come down? The thickness of this cap is once, twice, three times, four times, about a fifth of this whole distance. Can we all understand what I mean by that? So then that distance or that space here on my bottle is represented by the top line and this line right below the top of the label. I kind of eyeball what a fifth would be, let's just call it that much, okay? And now I know at the size that I'm drawing, the thickness of that cap, pretty accurate, really. Really accurately, okay? Remember, when you're drawing, you're making art, not science. So don't get caught up on the minuscule millimeter by millimeter concepts or you'll drive yourself insane. Just guess as close as you can and don't worry about it. Now that we got all the top to bottom stuff that's important. Let's go to the width of this bottle. How do I know how wide my bottle is on my drawing? Can you guess accurately? Sure, you can guess. But can, is there a way of doing it where you're not guessing, 
and maybe guessing way off where you're guessing pretty darn close. And the way you do that is you use your pencil or your barbecue skewer. It's up to you. And this is how you do what's called um, comparative measurements. Okay, this is comparative measurements. That's where you compare one measurement to another. And then you say, oh, it's half of that other one, or it's a third of this other one. Here's a really quick, easy example. You think of your grandkids, right? Uh, if you got grandkids or little nephews or whatever, imagine a little grandkid and maybe he's like three or four years old, little Billy. When he stands next to you, grandma, what percentage or what fraction of your overall height does your grandkid occupy when he's standing next to you? When I compare him to you, maybe a third of your height, could we say maybe that's probably true, right? Depending on how short or how tall the kid is and you are, right? Or half of your height if he reaches his waist. That's comparative measurements. I'm comparing your grandchild's size to your size. And when you guys stand together and look at me, he's half of your size, okay? That's comparative measurements. That's all we're doing. So I need to know how wide this bottle is. I go like this and I say, okay, this bottle is that wide. I'm trying to do it by the camera there. It's that wide, right? From my thumbnail to the end of the stick. Then I take that measurement, I hold it, and then I just put it towards the bottom of the bottle. I say it takes that measurement once, twice, about three times to get to the top, right? So basically what I'm saying is a third of this bottle's height, right? Because it took three of them, a third of this height is equal to its width. Pretty simple. So I'm gonna come over here to my drawing and I'm gonna look at what a third of this drawing is. Here's my high point and my low point. I'm gonna say one, two, three. I'm gonna say about here is a third. So then I take this distance because it took me one, two, three. I'm just, again, I'm going quick just so you guys understand. And I say distance is equal to a third of the height, which is And try to make this happen. And now I know that a third of this entire height is equal to its width. And now I have a very accurate, a little bit more there. Oh, you cut out and you froze. I'm still here. Robert? And so now, sorry, my computer like, kind of changed screens on me for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. A very accurate depiction, that's a really rough sketch, proportionate, right, to the bottom. Okay, can everybody hear me? We're all good? Yeah. No. No. Can you hear me now? Yeah, wait a minute. Okay, sorry about that. I don't know why my screen just changed for a second there. Uh, something with the machine here. Okay, so we're all back. Now, how do so I get you back again? Have, say again? How do I get you back again, Robert? I got me. I don't want me. I want you. Oh, okay. Does everybody else have that problem? You keep switching back yes. and forth, and then there's a, a line on here. It says the Visual Arts Center online network bandwidth is low. Okay. Let me, uh, me three one dots. second. I'm going to go get the, uh, the lady next door real quick. In one second. Yeah, sorry about that. It's a small. It's a, it's a there small. Should be a, there should be a gallery view, and if you look at your screen, you might see yeah. everybody together. And then if you find the one, you may have to arrow over to the VAC online. And then you click on that, and then that will give you the VAC portion, and not yeah, just your speaker. screen. Yeah, we want speaker right. view. Um, so, I, got, what problem? I, got, I got uh, Kim with me. What's the problem you're having? I, I got you now. Whoops. I guess you can talk. Can everybody hear and see me? Hold on. Oh. Let me change to me. There you go. Can you, everybody hear you and see me? There you go. Hi. That's better. And everybody, just thumbs up if you got me. Okay. Okay. Make okay. sure you mute yourself there. And you can go through and you can mute her like that. Right. So if she can't find it, she's got it. 
No, she's dead. She knows how to do it. Look, unmute her. There. Her. What, what is that? You want to unmute Julie? Yeah, leave them on mute. So they can decide themselves if they want to mute and unmute. No. So Seriously. far, they've been pretty good about it. It just went black for a second there. Mm -hmm. And then it gave me this other screen by itself. I hadn't touched anything. And then it came up over here, reduced. Mm -hmm. So then I opened it back up, and then some of them were seeing themselves rather than yep. me. So that might be, um, oh, you're on it. So should be good. everybody, um, just so that you know, mm -hmm. uh, we are going to be running um, a stronger internet. We're going to be on Fios. So these little things that keep glitching in and out um, will be hopefully fixed okay. uh, in cool. a week or two. So it should be a way better connection. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much. All right. Let's turn on the fan. You're messing with the AC again. Okay. All right. Everything's a learning process. This is all new to everybody. So sorry about that, guys. So let me go back to this thing. And then we're going to get started with the drawing. There we go. So you can see how I was able to get the width of this uh, bottle by comparing it to its height. And like I said, the width of this bottle, right, there it is, the width of this bottle is roughly equivalent to about a third of its height. And so that's called comparative measurements. This is what you'll see artists doing through all those really expensive videos you've purchased and never really understood when you go on YouTube and you see these amazing guys like David Gray and and all these Yupari and all these other guys, a lot of people skip over this. They just don't explain it or they don't do a very good job of explaining it. That is the secret, if you want to call it that, to drawing, okay? If you can master that by taking this class, I guarantee you, you're going to get better. You can literally draw a bottle of water, a shoe, your grandkids, a dog, whatever the hell you want, be able to do whatever you want. There is nothing limiting you other than your imagination, okay? Because that is how you draw. So all those books out there telling you how to draw sheep, how to draw cows, how to draw ducks, that's just ridiculous to me. There is no such thing as one way of drawing one thing and another way to draw something else. They're all drawn with the exact same techniques, at least in the way that I draw, okay? So let's get to it. Everybody hopefully understood my little example with this bottle. And hopefully that makes your life a little easier. And let's go over to this. That camera there. Okay, so we got the uh, arrow guide. Look, look up this video. It's pretty fun to see it go from a bunch of lines that are going to be a little strange to you, but by the end of class, it'll make more sense. Then when you watch my videos on YouTube, they'll start making more sense than somebody who's never taken the class. So we're gonna get rid of that. And I'm gonna go with, I'm using, by the way, I'm using Canson Methanthus, I think is the way it's pronounced, line of paper, okay? Um, this is called sand, which is funny because when I was in Iraq, that's all I saw was a bunch of sand. And then I ended up picking an Arab guy. And I just realized this morning that I picked a color and the paper actually, there's a label, is actually called sand and that was just purely by just luck right and this is just a really great brownish kind of color so you can use whatever color you want and speaking about color the tone of the paper the actual color does not matter just as long as it's a middle tone okay a mid value that way you can see what you're doing things are going to pop off the white and the black are going to both show if you go too light like a white piece of paper your white stock your white charm is not going to show all these so let me see how it works. So I hopefully you guys get the most out of this class. This cancer paper is 19 and a half by 25 and a half. You can order that. I order from Jerry's Aroma. You can order from wherever you want. Let me get this paper out of the way. Hobby Lobby has it also in a variety of colors. Yeah, variety of colors. Sizes. And one sheet at a time, if you want. All right. Now what I do is I'll to save money because you know, it can get expensive buying all these nice. Uh, it's called pastel paper, by the way, guys. I'll draw a line right about midway, 
and I do a portrait on one side and then a portrait on the other. Okay, you don't need a tiny little portrait in the middle of this and end up having a bunch of dead tree all around it. It just seems wasteful to me, but you do what you want. Okay, so let's get cracking on the any questions so far. We good? We're going to go to the Check this guy out. Okay, so I'm going to orientate my paper. In this case, it's this half, so it's this rectangle right here. It's already oriented vertically, right? Just like he is, right? Now over here, I'm gonna decide on my paper how big I wanna draw this guy. I do not care how big the photograph is. You need to get that out of your mind. This doesn't matter in size. Only what I wanna do. I'm gonna say, I feel like drawing him from here. And I hope, I hope you guys can see these lines. I mean, I can't control everything, but I'll do my best. From there to there. Let me draw the lines a little bit bigger. By the way, look at how I hold my pencil. This is also in my video. Let me see how I do it this way. I do this because you're not going to apply too much pressure when you hold your pencil this way. Okay? I call it ringing a bell. Okay? I call this the way you write your checks. That's writing grandma a letter. Okay? We're not writing grandma a letter. We're not filling out paperwork. If you do this while you're drawing, you're not going to be able to control your pressure as well. So the next time you see videos by anyone, don't worry about what they're doing here. Rather, look at their hand, how they hold their brush and pencils. And you'll know as artists, we tend to hold like this when you're professional, you're expected to know what the hell you're doing. This, look at this. See how wobbly this is? I can go in there and lightly put in all the information I need, and I don't have to worry about getting lines that are so dark that they don't want to erase. Okay? That's the advantage of doing it that way. Sorry about that. Camera's being all messed up trying to get this thing going. There we go. Kind of at a bad angle here trying to figure this out. So this is the top of his head over here. So on your paper, you want to draw a line for the top of his head, which is, I'm going to use my white so you can see it better, where his hair is kind of growing out there and then the bottom of his chin, okay? I suggest you put your lines on your photograph like this because it's going to make your life a lot easier when you go draw, okay? And the better you get at this, the less lines you're going to need. Okay, I, when I draw and I demo, I, I don't do a lot of lines. I do that for my students, but for myself, I do, by the way, the exact same techniques to draw from life. So you can sit in front of me and in an hour or two, I could draw you pretty accurately using the exact same techniques that I'm teaching you guys. So you're kind of getting that out of the class too. And in future classes, we'll draw from life and I'll show you how you can do it the poor man's way. Save you a few bucks. So, Hopefully you can see the white line I drew on top of it. Let me see, it looks a little bit dark. So I'm gonna say that's the top of his head and that's the bottom of his chin, okay? So the bottom of his beard, really, not his chin, is represented by this line on my paper. The top of his head up there is represented by this line on my paper. I do not care if the sizes are similar or they're way off, that does not matter. Please do not let that be an issue. Now we're going to look in between this space and let's see what halfway is. Do we have a halfway line between the top and bottom? What's halfway? Somebody just take a guess. Who can tell me what halfway is between the highest line and the lowest line? Well, bottom yeah. of the nose. Or the tip of his nose. Yeah. Or bottom of it. Probably the bridge. A little bit above the tip. Mm -hmm. If you look at the top and bottom, say again? Yeah, about a little bit say above again? the tip of his nose. Yeah, maybe a little bit above. It's not going to be perfectly accurate, but the, nose, the bottom of the nose is pretty close to halfway, right? Pretty close. Yeah, it's actually quite a bit off. So let's see if we can go a little bit higher than that. Maybe with that little wrinkle, let's see, that's pretty accurate. So actually, halfway between top and bottom, the most accurate halfway is 
right where the top of your nostril wings come in right here. See that? And the way I checked, all I did was, just look on the screen real quick, all I did was I checked from the bottom of his nose to the beard and I went like this. And then I held that measurement and then I went like this, I placed it from the bottom of his nose up and it did not land all the way on top. Therefore, it is not halfway. So that means this is too small, I need to go higher. So the next logical location to me was right here where the nostril wings are on the side of you know, the little nostril wings. The height of those wings, I'm gonna put a black line across his face. Hopefully you guys can see it on the screen. That's about halfway right there. And so how do I check that? I go from the nostril wings to the bottom of the beard, roughly. And then I hold it. I put it from the nostril wings up to the top of his head. And it's almost exactly the same, right? Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. So now I know on my drawing over here, I know from top to bottom, halfway is the nostril wings. Now what I'm gonna do is, over here in my photograph, this is what I suggest to my students is, I just draw a little line like this, and I'm gonna put the letter C for center. Or you can use the fraction half, whatever you want to, if you want to put Chinese letters, I don't care. Just as long as you know that means it's halfway of the entire head. That way you don't get lost. And when I say something later on, you're gonna be able to say, okay, I know what he's talking about, okay? Because this is where people start getting lost, they start making a mess on their paper. So this labeling, as I call it, it'll just make it much easier for you to understand. And you'll just, know, you'll just start seeing this thing get cut up into pieces and it'll just start making sense. So now, on my drawing, I go from the top to bottom and I'm gonna break that in half. Where's the halfway? I'm just gonna kind of guess. And then I'm gonna double check in the same way. I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna double check by going from my bottom line to my center line. And then I'm gonna take that measurement, put it from my center line to the top, and it looks like it might be a little too high because my stick is going past the line. So I need to lower it just a little bit. And all this little tiny bit of guessing, you're gonna get really good after a few classes and a lot of practice, you're gonna get really good at this and you're just gonna, you're gonna start seeing stuff. So I'm gonna check, boom, boom, that's pretty damn close, that's good. And remember, it only has to be good enough for government work. You understand? You know what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be to the millimeter people because people start looking at the third eyelash on the left and something ridiculous like that. You're gonna lose your mind, okay? Don't be one of those really weird anal people that start looking at, you know, the hair on an ant's ass and then you're worried about something that big, you know, come on, you know, don't be crazy. It just has to get close, right? Don't look so excited, Annie. All right. You're looking beautiful, by the way, as always. Well. You back in Colorado or what? Yeah, I'm in Colorado. I'm in Denver. Oh, all right. I got another Coloradian in the uh, group. One of these other ladies lives up there. Cool. Oh, I'm sorry. Not in the group. One of the uh, employees here. She just got back. She, uh, she left years ago. She just got back. I'm like, why? She's like, it's just too damn cold. You can't leave South Florida and go to Colorado. It's not. It's, it's just this time. You can go from Colorado to South Florida, and you're good. So now we got this bad boy cut up in half, right? The halfway line on my drawing representing the top of his nostril wings. Really simple. So now I'm going to come over here to the top half, okay, of the photo. We're going to work from the nostril wings to the top of his head. And we're going to try to find destination points that make sense to us, okay? See how simple this is? Remember, we're going to get big things and we're going to cut it up into slightly smaller things. And then we're going to get some of those smaller things and we're going to cut them up into slightly smaller of that piece and get one of those pieces and then we're going to cut it even a little bit smaller. Kind of like if you were chopping up meat in your kitchen and you had bought this big old chunk of meat, you're not going to grill that humongous 25 pound piece of meat. It's too much. So you start butchering this thing into smaller, more manageable pieces so you can make a stew or whatever it is you're going to make. So that, that's the kind I like to eat, okay? I like meat. So that's my concept of how to visualize this. So let's go from the top of the nostril wings to the top of the head, right? In other words, the top half of our photograph and then the top half of my drawing is where I'm going to be applying information. What's halfway between the top of the nostril wings? Now, I'm not always going to halfway because it's the easiest one to spot. It isn't always going to be... Say again? The deep wrinkle. 
Right, now there isn't always something functional that we can use that's halfway. Maybe he doesn't have wrinkles. Let's just say, let's just say for the sake of explanation that he didn't have a deep wrinkle. Say it was a young person and they didn't have an expression on their face and there was no wrinkle, right? It would lie on his forehead. It's like pointing at some, a spot on the desert. You're not gonna know where the hell you're at. It's a desert, everything looks the same. So I try to find destinations that are important. And I'm gonna just tell you the ones that I look for in every portrait. The hairline, okay? The hairline is gonna be one of them. The top of the eyebrow, not the bottom, the top of the eyebrow. That's gonna be another one. Let me do my black charcoal so I can see it better. The top of the eyebrows. Those are gonna be the big, on this top half, those are gonna be the two things I'm gonna to try to find. So let's go into halfway. Well, there's really nothing that is important that's halfway. And to say the big wrinkle, I get it, but I think that's a little too easy. I want to make it a little bit harder just to teach you better, okay, guys? So let's just say he didn't have a big wrinkle for the sake of uh, this class. So how, let's, let's look for the hairline first, because it's small. There's my, <clears throat> there's my hairline, okay? From the top of his head to the center line, the top of his nostrils, from my finger to my pencil, how far down do I got to go to get to that hairline? One, two, three. Can we say quarter, maybe? Two, three. Maybe a little less than a quarter of the way between my finger and my pencil. About a quarter of the way down is the hairline, right where the scalp meets the hair. Roughly, maybe a little bit less. Are we understanding what I mean by that? It's I not a space from, my, from right here to right there, that space, I broke this space down into quarters and my hairline roughly lands around there. So I'm gonna come over here to my drawing and from my top line to my center line, I'm gonna come down about a quarter of the way, roughly. I'm just eyeballing a quarter and wham, I now have what's called a hairline. What I like to do is, and you'll see what I'm doing, I'm gonna hold my pencil very lightly. I'll drag the line a little bit over to the edge. And I'm gonna put HL for hairline, okay? I do that because as we start to put lines, people get confused. And so I do this little HL really, really light so I can erase it, just to remind me, oh, that's the hairline. We don't wanna make a mistake and believe it to be something else, okay? Especially if somebody's wearing a hat or, I don't know, some sort of thing in their hair, we wanna start labeling things to make it easy, okay? Now, we got the hairline. What's the next big thing? The eyebrows, the top of the eyebrows. Now he's got his eyebrows raised because he's a little crazy or he's it's happy, I don't know. He looks like a happy guy. He's got his eyebrows a little raised. So where is the eyebrow uh, line right here? It's a little lower, quite a bit lower than halfway. That Kay was telling us was the deep wrinkle was halfway. So if halfway is right where my pencil is, how much lower is it to the eyebrow line. A little lower. This is where I like to call my 40-60, okay, or 60-40. All that means, you know 50-50 is in the middle, right? If I give you two halves, they're equal to each other, that's 50-50, right? 50%, 50%. Are we all good with that kind of math? So if I said, you know what, from the center line up to the top of the head, it's a 60-40. In other words, I go up 40% roughly, and then from there all the way up, it's 60%. It's a little lower than halfway, isn't it? That makes sense? That's what I mean by coming down a little lower than halfway. So I'm gonna go from the top of the head to the uh, nostril line, and I'm gonna go with something that looks, to me, to be about 40% of that space, a little lower than halfway. And you're just gonna make a light line on your paper, and now I have a rough estimate of where that eyebrow line is supposed to be. And if you just get close, you're gonna be, you're, you're gonna, it's gonna look great. Trust me on that, okay? So sometimes you'll notice the proportion that I probably see the most are a 60-40 kind of thing, where instead of being in the middle, right at 50-50, it's more like 60-40. One is a little bit bigger than the other one by just a bit, okay? And that's all that means. So now we're done with the big stuff on top. Let's go down to the bottom half because there's really not a whole lot there to speak of. We got what? Halfway between the center line and the beard is somewhere in the beard, right? Not very useful. 
So we're going to go and find out what it is from the center line, right, the top of his nostril wings, down to his, what I would say is his mouth line area where it starts to kind of get lightened. Let me draw, I think, a black pencil might be better. Right around there. I hope you can see that. Okay. Where the heck is that? Well, from here to here, so that distance again, and then again, it, I want to say about a third of this distance from my pencil on my finger, about a third of the way down, is more or less where you see the mouth area. Can we see that? From here to here, I come down about a third, and it gets you to right around what I would call the bottom of his bottom lip. It's hard to see in there because and it's all dark and he's all got so much hair. You, know, you, you follow what I'm saying, right? So I'm gonna come over here from my center line to the bottom of my beard, and I'm gonna break that space into thirds. And I'm just gonna five more thirds. One, one, two. Put ML, my Klima. ML. And that represents. See between this, how we're breaking this thing down in a logical this. Oh, everybody looks frozen. Okay, there we go. Everybody, got, I looked at my screen. Everybody was frozen in the same position. I just thought you guys were enthralled by my explanation. So we're all back. Okay, you're all moving again. I thought you were all having a stroke at the same time, which is another issue. So this is great. Are we all seeing how? This is making uh, almost scientific sense, right? I'm not lying to you. I'm not making things up. I'm not throwing some bizarre thing at you. I'm telling you, hey, it's about a third of the way between here and here. It's about halfway between there and that, right? If you make things like that, it simplifies your life immensely. You can draw anything once you get this concept. My little corny line that I tell people is, I don't really teach people how to draw. I teach them how to see. And really, that's what drawing is. It's how to see. If you can learn to see this way, the artist way, man, you're, you're, it's going to open just crazy amount of possibilities for you. Okay? I've had a lot of my students move on to the pastels, and they've done my pastel portrait workshops and my oil painting workshops, and they just they flourish and they explode because they get this. You get this, you can do anything. Okay. So let's go back to this. So I want to know where the bottom of the nose is because that's one of those destinations that I tend to look for all the time. Now I'm gonna look at the top of the nostril, the wings, right? Which was halfway between the entire head. And then what I just put for his mouth line area, right? And that little tiny space right there, where does the nose lay? I'm gonna say it's about right there. It's about halfway in between that space, isn't it? From here to here. It's about halfway to the bottom of the nose, isn't it? In that little space. So I'm gonna go to that little space on my drawing right here. And I'm going to just go about halfway. And now I know that represents accurately the bottom of his nose. Okay? Now I'm going to put the letters NL for nose line on that. Now, let's go. I left the eyes for last on this thing because I want to make sure that everybody is understanding this. Okay? And the eyes, people get confused. So let's go up to the eyes. Now, his head has got a little bit of a tilt. Okay, you'll see his head is kind of tilted this way a little bit, right? So make sure you draw your lines on your drawing in a little tiny bit of an angle to simulate the same angle that he's got in his head. Look at his pupil line. I'm gonna get my little barbecue skewer and I'm gonna put it up to the photograph. Look at his pupil line. See the angle right there? Pretty severe angle, isn't it? Right, so make sure you draw your line like that. that space is a little lower, I would say, than halfway between the top of the nostrils and his eyebrows. See that? Top of the eyebrows to the nostrils. You should have those lines already. About halfway in between that, a little lower than halfway, is this. Is it? This, his eye line. I'm going from pupil to pupil. Okay? And a little lower than halfway, I get the pupil line. And so I'm going to come over here to my drawing. I'm going to look for my eyebrow line. By the way, my eyebrow line, I labeled it E, B for eyebrow. Just makes life easier. From my eyebrow to the top of the nostrils, I'm going to go a little more than halfway. 
And I'm going to do that. You can see the angle there. Okay? Are we following so far? Are we kind of getting the concepts? If you get a little confused, don't worry about it. Everybody gets a little bit confused. Okay? This is a lot to take in because you're trying to learn how to do something that you've never done before. Don't feel bad if you feel a little confused. Every single class I've had, I've had a bunch of classes, workshops. It, it never fails every year. Don't feel bad if you feel confused. Everyone feels confused at first. Okay? So from the top of the eyebrow to the top of the nostril wing that we did earlier for the center line, remember? In that space, the eye line, the eye line to me is pupil to pupil. The little black dots inside your eyes, that's your pupil. A little lower than halfway in between that space, a little bit lower than halfway, is that pupil line. Then I try to follow the same angle that I see there. Similar. Don't worry if your angle's not perfect. It isn't important that it to be the exact 22.5 degrees. That's just ridiculous. Just get close, okay? And there we go. There's that pupil to pupil line. I remember that lays between the top of the nose, the top of the uh, nostril wings, and the top of the eyebrows. It lays right in between that. And there we go. We got pretty much everything we need. I'm going to label that eye line. You can call it pupil line, whatever you want. I'm going to call it EL for eye line. And so I'm not sure how it looks on your screen, if you can see it or not, but I got a bunch of little lightly placed initials. ML for mouth line, C for the center line, NL for nose line, EL for eye line, EB for eyebrow, HL for hairline. And I got them all placed there so I know where all this stuff here is over here. Okay? So, hopefully everybody's up to speed and you got this guy all mapped out from top to bottom. Now we know what he's got from top to bottom because that's all we've concentrated on. And hopefully you've gotten a nice, accurate picture. And what I'm hoping to do next week is we're going to put your pictures up. I want you to have an easel or some way of holding up so I can look at your pictures individually. Okay? And then I'm going to make fun of each one of you on an individual basis. No, I'm kidding. I'm not, I'm not going to make fun of you. But then I can do a quick critique. We'll zoom through the quick peek, okay? But most of you are going to have the same problems. Okay, so we're going to go with this guy. We need to know, we know he's this tall, but how wide is this guy? How do we do that? Remember the bottle example I gave you in the beginning? We determined the width of the bottle by measuring the width of the actual bottle and then comparing it to the height. Remember we did that at the very beginning? Well, let's do that now, but with the human face. What I do, here are my photographs, let me grab my white pencil. Where the eye line is, I always go there. And the reason is the human skull, if you're black, white, female, male, old, young, a lot of things can change when you start going into the cheek area. Some people have bigger cheeks, right? Because they're fatter or skinnier and they got wide cheeks. There's a million things that can happen. And so you're gonna get all kinds of wacky results. What I find is that if you go from Right there, I'm, gonna, hopefully you can, I'm just going to draw a line. Right there, all the way across to right there. Because his eye line is like that. And I'm going to go right to where the, let me get my black one for this side. Right where the hair meets the flesh over there, and where the hair meets the flesh over here. Hopefully you guys can see that white and black line right there. Okay? That's the width of the face. I know it can be wider and thinner in other areas, but for the sake of what we're doing right now, I always go to the eye area, the eye line, and I measure across the eyes, okay? Flesh to flesh. Now, if you're not sure, I'd rather you put your pencil down and just look at how I'm gonna do it. And I'm gonna explain it a couple times because people get confused. Really, really simple. So I wanna know on the photo, how wide is this guy? He is that wide. See, I put my pencil, I mean, my little barbecue stick right up on it, and my fingernails on the, this edge, my stick is on that edge. And I'm doing again where the hair meets the flesh and where the hair meets the flesh over here. Not all the way out to the ears or the hair, just along the face. That's how big it is from my finger to the, stick, the edge of the stick. I'm going to take that. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to turn it vertical. Okay? And then I always like to start at the bottom. Um, so I'm going to hold it to my bottom line. And it's a little higher than the nose line, so I'm going to go a little higher. So, no. Of the mouth line up and leave you in the forehead and the nose line. Now, when you look at that, 
from the nose line, the very bottom of the nose, to the hairline, it's almost exactly to the millimeter the same size. Okay? Now, you guys do it. You're going to measure on your photograph the width from flesh to flesh. Hold it, turn it vertical, and then see what answer you got. I got, I work from the bottom up. I got from the very bottom of his nose to the hairline. It's exactly the same thing. Okay? Everybody got that? Okay. So that's my answer. Hopefully everybody's got that same answer. Who did not get the same answer? Okay? Who doesn't speak English or thinks I'm talking Chinese or Spanish right now? I can talk Spanish. Enough beer, I can talk Chinese too. No? We're good. We, all, we understood what I just did, I hope, right? Yes. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Usually, I, you know, that one kind of kicks people's butt sometimes. So my answer is, he's as wide across the face here as he is tall from the nose to the hairline. We already have the nose and hairline done from earlier, right? So we're going to go to our drawing, and we're going to find the hairline, and we're going to find the bottom of the nose, the nose line, and we're going to do this on the drawing. We're going to measure that from the hairline to the nose line. We're going to take that measurement on my drawing. I'm going to turn it sideways. And where was it that I measured on him? Across the eye line, which we just did a few minutes ago, didn't we? So I'm going to place, I'm holding my measurement. I'm going to go across the eye line here. And I'm going to place at the edge of my stick line at the edge of my fingernail line. I leave enough space on either side of that line so I can put in the hair, the beard, you know. Make sure it's more or less centered from the edge of your paper to the other edge. So you don't have a face you know, way over here or way over there. Okay? Are we all good? We, how, did everybody see how I got that? Just you don't need to turn on your speaker. You can just put a thumbs up if you're good to go. You're like, bro, this is awesome. I understand. I speak in English. Awesome. Thumbs up. Hey, no middle fingers, Laura. Damn. <laughs> this is a thumb, Laura. Not the other one. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, right back at you. So we all understand. Pretty simple, right? Now we have a very accurate depiction for the width of his face by comparing it to the height of his face. Do we see why we started with the height first? Is, is it kind of connecting for you? We have all these destinations, and we just got to see what two destinations give us the same that, you know, equates to his width or something close to it. So now we got the width of his face. So I'm going to make sure I mark that on my paper. Now we know how wide his face is going to be. Now the very next step, right after I get the overall width of his face, is to get the, uh, the width of his eyes. Okay? The eyes, I'm going to put a line for you. Hopefully you can see it. I'm going to go, I'm going to call this the corner of his eye over there. And then I'm going to call this over here the corner of his eye over here. I like to do the corner, and especially with a guy like this, he's got a lot of wrinkles, where the eyelid on top, it always sits, by the way, in a little anatomy for you, the eyelid on top always sits over the bottom eyelid. Okay? Remember that. Where the two eyelids meet is what I call a corner. Okay? Now, sometimes it gets dark and it's hard to tell. Take your best guess. So from here is a corner, and here's a corner. From left to right, we are roughly five eyes wide, okay? Your eye from left to right almost fits on this little piece of flesh right here and on the other side. And then you are your eye, and then in between your eyes, you can usually fit one eye, sometimes a hair bit more than your other eye. So that gives you one, two, three, four, five eyes across, roughly. Rarely are we exactly five eyes. It's usually three equal sized eyes in the middle and then three quarters of an eye on either side depending on whether somebody turns their head in a slight angle or not. Okay, guys? The time frame right here. So, we're gonna measure, this is, I've been trying to refine this to make it as simple as possible. And the simplest way that I've done this over the last few years, I go from the corner of the eye to the other corner of the eye. You determine what the corner is for you, okay? Because I know it's kind of a small picture on my screen here. But watch how I'm gonna do it. You watch me do it, and then you go and you follow, okay? I'm going to go from corner to corner of the eye, from one eye to the other, and I say, hey, from the one corner of one eye all the way across to the corner of the other eye, 
It's that big. Just like we did the width of the face, same concept. It's that big. Then I'm going to take it and I'm going to go like this. I'm going to turn my, I'm going to hold that measurement. I'm going to turn my hand vertical and I'm going to see which vertical dimension is the same as what I got on my stick here with my finger. And I'm going to just look, looking at it. I can tell, let's see. Let's start always from the bottom up. Eh, it doesn't quite hit anything. From the mouth line area, eh, eh, eh. Hey, that's not too bad. So from the top of his head to the top of his eyebrows is roughly the same distance as the corner of one eye all the way across to the corner of the other eye. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you guys got the same or similar dimensions. Do it again, Robert. Say it again. I'll do it again. So I'm going to go from right here to the corner of one eye. Do a little white line. I hope you guys can okay. see that. The corner of the eye to the corner of the eye. Yeah. Break it up again. The corner of the eye. And then my fingernail is the corner of the eye. You're breaking up. I'm going to turn it vertical. And I'm going to the measurement between my fingernail and the stick. Then it's staying again. So what, what's happening is that it's freezing. Sorry about that, guys. Hopefully you can hear me again. It froze no. for a second there. I, I didn't, whoops, I didn't get any of that, Robert. You just broke up. Yeah, I had a problem with just a second ago. We're trying to fix it right now. Thank you. Yep. You're We're good. You're good. Everybody give me a thumbs up. If you can hear yeah. me and uh, see what yeah, you're doing. I can now. Could you do okay. that? Yeah, we just, yeah, to the, the corner. The screen yeah. changed and went black on me for a second there, so. First day, boy, everything's going to be kind of a nightmare. Okay, so I'm going to go over it again. From the corner of one eye to the corner of the other eye. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm measuring. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to hold my measurement. I'll break it up again. And my right at the bottom of the beard, right, it doesn't land on another feature. So I'm going to go up. It doesn't land on anything. No, it doesn't land on anything. What I found is from the top of his head to the top of his eyebrows, okay, his eyebrow line and the top of his end is the same distance. Did everybody get that same answer or something pretty close? I hope yeah, you did. I understand. Now, if you got the same answer, you should. I did, but I also got the same measurement from the bottom of his mouth to the bottom of his uh, beard. Uh, on your photograph. Yeah, on the photograph. If you went a little bit further out on his, what you call the corner of his eye, that can happen because maybe your measurements are a little wider than mine because you went out to the rear. That's okay. Just as long as you understand where what your starting points are compared to mine. I think more than you, it sounds like, because that for me would be too big. You know what I mean? Just a That's little okay, bit. not a big deal. It's close to that. It's close to that. You just went a little bit further out than I did. Not a big deal. Just as long as you understand what you measured and what it yeah, represents, okay? From the top of the head to the eyebrow the same is the width of the eyes. Yes, that's what, I, that's what I'm saying, yeah. From the top of his head to the eyebrow is the width of the eyes, okay? Now I'm gonna go over to my drawing. And on my drawing, I'm gonna go from the top of the head to the top of the eyebrows. And I'm gonna get that measurement like so, and I'm gonna hold it, and then I'm gonna turn it sideways, and again, I'm gonna place it along my EL line, my I line, I'm gonna place it there. Now, before you put your fingers down and mark something, look at your, your photograph. He's got a little bit less flesh on this side 
of this of this eye, and he's got a little bit more on this eye, right? Yeah. So yeah. notice that means you're gonna put your fingers, right? You're gonna put it a little bit to your left. So one side is a little bit smaller than the other. What is on the flesh that's left over? Does that make sense? Yes. You're not gonna put it in the dead center of that space, but then you're gonna make it look like his head is directly facing you when you know his head is a little bit turned away. So I go like this on my drawing, let me double check. Yep. And I look at my fingernail to the edge over here, and the edge over there, and it's a little bit to the left of it, so that means I'm good. And this is just a rough estimate, guys. It doesn't have to be, you know, if you gotta draw it later on just a little bit wider or a little bit closer, that's fine, okay? Not a big deal. Now, once we got the corner of the eyes, how much space is there between your two eyes? From, from your tear duct to your tear duct, yes. you got one eye's width between your tear duct to your tear duct, don't you? Your yes. eye, one of your eyes fits in the middle of that space, does it not? It does. Yes. Not. look wider though. They're more wider it apart. Be, it's not wrinkling, it could be. So I'm gonna double check because there's a lot, it's a dark picture. And it's a little bit wider. Usually, I can go right into my drawing and the two corner of the eyes that I did it, I can just break that space up into thirds, right? Two thirds, the center third would be the space in between the eye and the other two thirds left behind would be the eyes. But in this case, why don't you just yell out that his spacing in between his eyes is a little bit bigger. That's a little strange because usually adults are pretty much the same in the middle, but occasionally you get people like this that are a little different and they have a little bit more space in between. So now I'm gonna come over here from my uh, photograph, I'm gonna come over to my drawing. And I'm gonna break my drawing up into thirds, that little space that we just put for the eyes, okay? That little space for the eyes, I'm gonna break it up into thirds, but I'm gonna put the middle third a hair bit bigger than the two outside thirds, okay? That way it roughly simulates the same proportions that I got in my photograph. Is everybody good with that? Do we understand what I mean? I hope so. Now, well, isn't the left eye a little bit smaller than the right eye also? Uh, no, just draw them the same. Remember the whole, the left hair on the ant's ass example? Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Don't all right. feed that person. Eyes okay. in general, I'm, I'm, I'm just messing with you. Okay. Eyes in general are gonna be the same size. We're pretty much symmetrical people. Okay, unless okay. there's a severe problem like, um, I drew a lady who had a stroke and then her one side of her face was uh, quite a bit different than the other side, okay? Because there was paralyzed or whatever at one time. That's a more rare occasion. But normal uh, people or people that don't have an Ill illness, they're roughly the same. If you start getting into tiny little tweaks, I'm telling you this from experience, and you start worrying about that little millionth of an inch difference between one eye and the other, what ends up happening is your brain takes that information and multiplies everything times 10. And so what you saw as a hair's breadth, your brain says, oh, it's 10 feet. And you're, you're gonna make one eye this big and the other eye's gonna be that big. I've seen it every time because your brain exaggerates. So to keep from you exaggerating, I tell people just make both eyes roughly the same, okay? Unless it's a, a weird circumstance, a, a scar, a car accident kind of thing, I don't know, something like that. But they're, pr they're pretty much the same size, okay? okay? So the eyes are a little bit smaller. They're the same to each other, but a little bit smaller in the space in between them. Okay, the space in between them is bigger. Are we good? Robert, hi, this yeah. is Julie. Um, yeah. Is this gonna go on YouTube? Um, I think they're gonna make it available from what I understand. So awesome. you guys will be able to go back into the video. Okay, that'd be great. really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, one somebody just came in and told me um, that they're gonna put it on YouTube. Okay. So if you miss anything, if you don't quite understand something today, not a big deal. You'll be able to go to YouTube and see this whole thing again. Okay. All right. Great. No problem. I'm glad. I'm glad I can help. So there's my eye spacing, and I broke it into thirds, and I left the center third just a little bit bigger. Just get close. And there we go, we got that. Right now it's 12 4. I'm not even sure what time to stop. I'm not gonna keep going until somebody kicks me out of the building, all right? I don't know what time I'm supposed to get out of here, but 
I think I got another 20 minutes up. And so there we go. There's the spacing for the eyes. Now let's go to the nose. Typically, your nose is as wide from left to right as your pupil to pupil. Okay? Right. But that isn't always true. It can sometimes be a little bit wider. In this gentleman's case, you can see his nose is a little bit wider than the, the tear duct to tear duct area, right? I'm sorry, not pupil to pupil, like I said earlier. Tear duct to tear duct. Right. It's a little bit wider than the tear duct to tear duct. So you need to make it a little bit wider on the drawing. So on my drawing, I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna go a little bit to each side of the tear duct and drop in a line vertically like so. And now I have a nose that's nice, big, round, wide nose just like this gentleman here, okay? Are we all up to speed? How I got the width of that nose? Yes. Excellent. We oui, oui. is really, I'm not gonna worry too much about the mouth because it's all hair and shadow. It's not really, you're not really able to see much. But normally, just so you guys know, your mouth is usually as wide as your pupil to pupil measurement. Usually, that's what it is. Or a little bit smaller than that, okay? That's what it usually is. In this case, we can't do that because you can't see the corners of his mouth, can you? He's got a big old bushy mustache, a beard, so there's no point in worrying about it. We'll just add that later. We'll worry about you know adding bushy lines and everything. So I'm glad I picked this guy because we're going to be able to learn a lot off this dude. So now we got the width of his nose, the width of his eyes. We got where everything goes. Now I like to go in and I start doing some just, again, remember I hold my pencil, right? We're not writing out checks. We're not writing letters. We're holding our pencil far back like this. And that's going to give us really light lines. I start looking at him and I say, I'm going to go from the temple area on the side of the cheek area. I'm going to work on this side. I'm just going to work and try to get a similar shape to what I see. I'm not drawing real hard. I'm just doing nice, loose, sketchy line and kind of concave like this, right? It's kind of curving in. So I'm going to do something that kind of curves in. So I'm not looking at the whole picture. I'm looking right now just trying to focus my attention on this area right here. So I get the edge of that flesh right there as it meets the hair. And I get something that looks like a, a moon almost. Or the, or the letter C backwards or both. And it goes up like that above the, the eyebrow line just a little bit. Then I go like this and I try to go up to where the hairline is. And I just kind of try to worry about it in small sections. And I just kind of worry and stare at just these small sections as I draw. And I try to make sure I go on the same angle that I see just to draw those shapes. Here's a really cool trick that I like to teach my students. When it comes to like the roundness of the head, okay, or the, like the top of the head, say a bald guy or something like that, or the top of a hat, here's a really cool trick that you can do. I call it the covering technique. So let's just say I'm trying to figure out the shape of this forehead, and if you're making it too square or too round or whatever your issue is. It's hard to, to just focus on an area because your brain wants to see everything. So what I do is I'll cover from the eyebrow line down, I'll put a piece of paper. So all I see is from the eyebrow up. And then I'll do the same thing to my photograph. Then I Shape, that dome shape of the forehead. You can compare shapes, right? Much easier. I put it right here to the eyebrow line and then this paper here. And then by doing that, I'm able to compare and say, man, you know, mine is too flat, uh, too pointy, too round, whatever your issue is. But now I can just see a shape and my brain isn't trying to take in the face of that individual. It just simplifies things in your brain into an abstract shape, and it just makes it easier to, for you as an artist to see. And you can do that all over the place. So let's just look at the photograph here. Say, in this case, he's got a beard, but just imagine a person and that had a jawline, right? I always see people have a, a real problem with jawlines. And if you join me in the future, we'll go to somebody without a beard, 
and we'll show you the anatomical features of the jawline and stuff, we'll cover that. But you can cover from the bottom of the ear to the center of the chin, like that, and then you would have the jaw, and it would just be this funky hill or something like that. It would look like a funky shape. And then you can compare that shape to the shape you draw in your drawing. And it just simplifies things much, much more than trying to do it by eye, okay? Now, after a while, you get good, you start, you know, you start seeing it all on your own. You're, you're not gonna struggle so much. And so there's that. Now I got something that roughly resembles his shape right there. And now, here's a little shape that looks kind of funny. It looks like a mushroom. If you include the top of his forehead here, or the whole forehead, I should say, and you follow it down his nose to the base of his nose, it kind of looks like a big mushroom, right? See that, like funky shape right there? Got to try to see things as artists. We try to see the world in, in funny shapes, a square, a rectangle. Oh, that reminds me of a heart, you know, or, or a, a, in this case, I got this one from Scott Waddell, another artist. It, to him, he always sees this mushroom shape. And then you try to copy that shape, okay? I hope that helped you guys to simplify this. And so I'm just gonna follow the edges as I see them as best I can. Look, I'm holding my pencil. So I, I'm gonna make mistakes. The many years I've been doing this, I still make mistakes. And then I'll just be able to erase them. And then the edge of the top of the, uh, what do you call it, the nostril wing goes out like this. And if you look at the shape of this cheek, right here across the nostril, uh, the nostril's wing, it goes like this, kind of flattens out for the beard, and it goes up. So it kind of does almost like a wide, fat bottom V. That's seeing shapes, and it's as low as the bottom of the nose. Does that, and notice it's just very shapy. At this point, people get frustrated, and they want to speed this up. They want to speed this up, and they want to just start drawing eyes or you know all kinds of pretty cute stuff you don't want to start right now drawing eyes you want to keep doing what i call blueprints it's very tempting to start doing this thing you know doing this thing and start drawing little tiny eyes the problem with that is that people start that way too early in the process and then when they run into problems because they have now this eye that they put all this time into and you did it too damn big, too small, too whatever. So fight the urge to get details. Keep trying to find the measurements of things. Keep trying to find the spaces between things and try to get it as accurately as you can on your, on, your, um, on your drawing. So now let's look at the height of the eye, okay? You see the height of the eye, right? From the, eye, from the eyelash to eyelash, from top to bottom of his eye. That little skinny area. You can measure that and compare it to something else. I'm just gonna kind of guesstimate it because it's such a tiny area. I'm just gonna guesstimate that. It's a nice thin area, but let's just say you were struggling and you really could not find the size of the eye from top to bottom. Watch how I do it. That little tiny space from the, in the middle of the eye view is the highest point. From eyelash to eyelash, it's that little tiny sliver of wood from my fingernail. And then I put it sideways. I'm going to compare it to the width of the eye. It takes that space once, twice, about a third, maybe a little less. So if you wanted another way of doing it, you can say about a third of the eye's width is roughly the same as the eye's height. That's another way of doing it. You understand that, guys? I hope you get that point. All right, so before I continue, I got 10 minutes left. So I want to see if uh, you guys have any questions for me, okay? Does anybody have any questions of any kind? Mm -hmm. No, nope. you guys are just so awesome. I mean, you know what it is? My teaching ability is so great, and I am such an awesome teacher that you guys already, you don't even need to show up next week. <laughs> That's how awesome I am. Oh, but Robert, we want to come. <laughs> <laughs> In the last 10 minutes of the class, I'll, I'll leave it for questions. And what we're going to do, I'm going to talk about next week. So next week, we're going to draw, we're going to continue with this guy for the next three classes, okay? 
to do him so what I want you to do is put him away print out something else okay one of your kids I don't care if it's a dog I don't know, something that interests you and draw that okay draw it using what you remember from this it's great that they're gonna put it on YouTube because you can just go back to anything you missed or were confused about okay and then next week I want to see basically one, two, three, uh, four, eight, nine, ten, ten different drawings, because you're all going to have ten different drawings of whatever, your grandma, your dog, leave this one for us to do in class, okay? So don't do any more on this at all. What's that? Don't do any more on this at all. Yeah, you could if you want to, I can't stop you, but I'm going to be working on him for the next three weeks. Okay. So, you know, you're going to be like really bored sitting there watching me, unless you want to draw him three different times. That's your business. You know what I mean? Okay. But if I concentrate on him, we, uh, I think we're going to be better off. You never know. If we finish him next week, I mean, this class seems to be doing really good. You guys don't seem as confused as other classes I've done. You know, if we end up going far enough and we can finish him in the second or the third week, then so be it. You know, we'll play by ear. But for right now, he's going to be our task for the next uh, three classes. So, Draw something, now you see the size that I printed him out right here? This is the size that you wanna print out faces, okay? Because you wanna be able to see the details in the, you know, the nose, the mouth. If it becomes pixelated, then choose something else, okay? So I'm gonna talk real quick about taking your own pictures. Say you find that really interesting looking person at the supermarket, and by interesting, I usually mean ugly as hell. Because ugly people make the best drawings, right? Pretty people are boring. So you find that one lady, you say, wow, you have an interesting face. Wink, wink, right? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> this freaking button. There we go. All right, you can see me. So you come up to my handsome face in the supermarket, you say, hey, big man, can I take a picture of you? You handsome devil, I'm going to be, hey, baby. No problem. You want my number? It's all good. You know, I'm married, but I'm not a jealous guy. And you're going to be like, of course I'm going to give you my number. Except you, uh, talk. Don't get excited, okay? I don't swing like that. But everybody else, you're good because you're female. So you take a picture. When you email your picture, you take a picture of me, your kid, your grandkid, your dog, whatever the hell you take a picture. When you email yourself from your phone, make sure when it gives you the option. I, I got an, uh, an iPhone. I, I don't know how Sam, Samsung, Android... I don't know how those work. I'm talking about the iPhone. Make sure when you email yourself, it gives you a, a picture quality. Go and um, hit actual, because it says small, medium, large, actual. Actual is gonna give you the most amount of information, okay, from that photograph. So when you email it to yourself, you can then print it out and it's gonna look like the picture that we're working on. Okay, guys? And it's not going to be so pixelated. If you, if you hit small or medium, when you go try to copy and paste it onto your computer from your email, it, the minute you zoom in a little bit, it's going to start getting all those little squares and pixelation, and you're going to lose quality. Okay? It takes more memory, but it's the best way to work as an artist. Okay? So now you learn that from me. When you take all these pictures and you want to draw them in the future, always send yourself actual. Okay? Actual. Hit actual. Okay. So... What else? Any questions? Anybody have any questions? No. I'll just keep hit this freaking button thing. There we go. So we're gonna we got like probably another five minutes. I might as well keep drawing. Oh, I have a question. What time is class actually, Robert? Because this time you said it was supposed to be eleven, and then it was eleven thirty. Is it eleven thirty? It's supposed to be 11. They, it was just a typo. They accidentally put 11.30 on that email. Okay, so it starts at 11 next um, week. Yeah. Next okay. week, I'll be here doing my thing at 11. Okay, good. Okay? So yes. Now, now, you know, they, the, um, the calendar invite can be resent, and when it's resent, you, you can have it sent with the right time. Then if anyone is using their calendar to figure out when they're coming to class, it, it, it's automatically updated as opposed to uh, missing it again because you're, you're waiting for your calendar to tell you when something's coming up. So it'd be, be nice if there was a calendar event re-updated. Okay, I'll let, the, uh, 
So that's that's what the girls do in the office there. I'll, I'll let them know they can update. That, that would be good. Thanks, Rob. No, no problem, mate. So I'm just going to look at the hair. You see how the hair, there's a tuft of hair that comes out and catches a lot of light? It's right below the hairline. I'm going to go a little bit below the hairline, and I'm going to start doing something that looks like that shape. And remember, you're doing very light drawing right now, and you're just you're just trying to get the gist of it. Look at how simple this is, guys. This is simple. This is it's more painful to sit here and make what would take me 15 minutes into a freaking hour and a half. This is really really simple. And you look and you look at shapes. See the outside right here, this like temple area by the next to his eye, and then the edge of his hair. Now, does that shape look like the shape you got there, right? If it doesn't, adjust it. As simple as that, adjust it. That means you need to move something. And I just want to keep sketching for you guys because then that way you see what I'm talking about. From his eye line, it starts to move out. From his eye line, it starts to move out. Now, watch this. Hey, Rob, how far out do does the tuft of hair, say, on this side of his face, how far out does that go? Let's do more comparative measurements. Really simple. From the edge of his face, that's this white line I do for you guys earlier. Remember that? On the edge of his face there? I'm yeah. going to the end of his face to this, where the tuft of hair, now it's hair, so it's kind of like all over the place, but roughly it comes out to about, let me my white pencil, it comes out to about right there, okay? So I need to move that amount of space that way, and that's as far out as the hair comes out. So how big is that? Well, the edge of his face is here, the edge of his hair is roughly right around there. I meant to that. Usually I can just eyeball this, but I'm trying to give you guys a more concrete way of doing things to get accuracy. I say, hey, it's that big. What's the same as this distance right there between my nail and my stick, uh, the edge of my stick? I'm just going to go like this and put it up here. Hey, will you like that? From the mouth of my area to the top of the nostril wings, it's pretty much the same distance. So I go to my drawing. I go from my mouth line to the nostril wing. I take that measurement, turn it sideways, put the tip of my stick to what represents the edge of his face here on this side. My fingernail represents the width. Drop in a line. Now at this scale that I'm drawing at, I'm drawing the same distance in proportion to what I see here, okay? When you do this method, it doesn't matter how big this is and how big you're drawing it, okay? Because people get confused there. And let me just tell you real quick, there's a thing called transference, okay? Or I call it transference. That is not, what, what, what is transference? I want to make this clear because people get confused. Transference is, oh, he is, you know, that big, and so then you just do it that big on your paper. And he is that big over there, do it that big on your paper. He's that big over there, you do it that big on your paper. You're just copying sizes. That is just the world's worst and slowest Xerox machine. Okay? Don't do that because you're actually not using any artistic part of your brain. You're just, it's like tracing. You're not really doing art in the sense that you're not really using your art brain, okay? So don't do that. Now there is a thing called sight size. I'm not gonna get into all that. It's an old technique that goes all the way back then to the Renaissance where you put your paper close enough so you draw the same size person. That's a whole other thing. This is much more functional for you guys, okay? This is real drawing. Don't start transferring because then you're gonna be forced to print things out the same size as whatever paper size you're working with. That is very inefficient, okay? I'm a freedom guy. I'm a Marine. I fought for this country. I believe in freedom. What does that mean to me in art? I'm on a cruise, and I'm sitting there uh, having a, a coffee with my wife because she forces me to spend time with her like most wives do, and all I want to do is go to the casino, but she won't let me, right? And so I'm sitting there having a coffee with my wife. I always take my little sketchbook with me and my little pencil kit. And there's the drunk lady, because there's always one on every cruise, sitting at the coffee shop. If you don't know how to do things without calipers, one of you were holding up calipers earlier, or doing transference, or using some other fancy weird tool, you couldn't do what I do, which is to basically sit there, ignore my wife, but always nodding, yes, honey, whatever the hell you say, whatever you want, because I'm not stupid, right? and then draw the drunk lady next to me, or the person at the pool, or whatever. Being able to draw from life, that's freedom. A sketchbook, a pencil, 
and time. That's it. That's all I need. That's freedom. That's what I want you guys to know how to do. I want you guys to be able to get a sketchbook and a pencil and go to, uh, I think my kids, I'm a church going guy. I think on church, they got a big old park. Right? That they just build a splash pad and thing and all that and the kids go crazy. I'll sit there because there's a bunch of parents and kids and I'll draw people at the park. How cool is that? Isn't that cool? Isn't that what you would love to do? Or do you want to grab little calipers, you know, every time you want to draw or tracing paper or all these other weird tools and, you know, you know sight size, you're never going to get anything done that way. You're going to be stuck all the time. So this is right now, what I'm teaching you, can be transferred to doing it to, for, to life. And we're going to go over that in the uh, Cape Coral Christian Chiquita. Yeah, that's right, Julie. So any questions before we uh, sign off here? Good. Thank you, Robert. My pleasure. I had a great time. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Um, next week, again, draw something on your own. Pick another person. I would stick to people because I think it's, uh, you know, it's the same thing as what we're doing, portraits. And draw somebody, whoever it is, famous, not famous, I don't care. And then we're going to critique. So work on that for the week. That's, let's call that your homework. And then we're going to critique you guys real quick tomorrow, or I mean, uh, next week, we'll throw tomatoes at it, and then we'll get started with this guy again, all right? All right. See you Monday. Thank you so Have much. Nice awesome. I can't wait till next week. Thanks, Robert. Thank My you pleasure. very much. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, Robert. Bye, Bye, everyone. Bye, Robert. Thank you. You got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you.